Hotel Echo Lima, Lima Oscar. Good evening from London, England, for myself, the one and only Intrudy, the LG Red Pink, short for Dele London Guna, Space Romeo Echo Pa 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 Indigo November. This is another um, roundup of um, this weekend's game in the Premier League. It's about eight fixtures. And I'll be talking a little bit about um, Liverpool v Chelsea, the Carabao Cup. And, um, well, at least I'll be exploring my weekend. <laughs> because we don't play until this Sunday, Watford away. So, um, before I get started, I want you to smash the thumbs up like button for me, yeah, in abundance. Make sure you do that. Make sure you um, leave um, your messages um your opinions etc in the comment section below where i'll promote positive feedback only yeah and um share this channel virally all over the globe i want your friends and relatives all over the globe to um share this channel and um smash that share button for me for those of you that are watching me for the first time share this channel out and for those of you that I will definitely be watching for the first time. Speaking of friends and relatives, subscribe to my channel, yeah? Let's push this subscribe number to 1,000. That is the road to 1,000 right now. That is what I'm calling out for. So let's help each other out and um, get that subscribe button uh, moving, yeah? Upwards, onwards and upwards, should I say. And if you subscribe, I'll shout you out like I did with Adam. And I'll do with many, many more people. Subscribe. Smash that button for me passionately. And I'll do my best to keep um, my content as um, consistently going as possible. But you guys have got to help me out by subscribing, like, comment, share. Whatever it takes to keep this channel big. Bigger and bigger. And I can tell you, I've just about got over 21 viewers. Uh, sorry, I've, let me rephrase that. I've just about got over 21,000 viewers. So let's keep the numbers going there. It's all beautiful here. So um, before I kick it off, yeah, um, this is not a football related issue. This is um, a musical related issue. Jungle is artist, but MC himself, Skibber D, has passed away. I only found that today. And um, all thoughts goes out to his friends and his um, relatives at such a sad time. All I can say is there's only ever going to be one MC Skibber. So rest in peace, um, Skibber D. And um, hope the angels um, look after you up there, my, my brethren. My brother. You did, you did me proud, man. Part of my youth. So a massive shout out to Skibbity and rest in eternal peace. Right, back on the um, football again. So um, a roundup of all the Premier League goals from this weekend's fixtures. So let's start off with um, Friday's fixture, Southampton v Norwich. Um, I have to say, looking at that first half, Southampton looked more creative. They were more um, on the front foot. And um, you could see with the chances they had Boja, um, who's been impressive for them this season since his um, arrival on loan from Chelsea. He had an opportunity. Um, the midfielders, Romeo and um, Ward-Prowse, were dominating in midfield. And um, Che um, Chay Adams um, got himself onto the score sheet with a very clever finish. Just lifted it above... Um, the defender's head, I think it was Max Aaron's, and into the net. And in the second half, um, it was similar domination by um, Southampton, especially in the midfield area. And they were um, always on the front foot, and they got a second goal. And what a strike by um, Romeo to make it 2 0. Norwich had their opportunities in the first half. I mean, Grant, or in the second half, Grant Henley. He should have had that um, header on target. At least make the goalkeeper work. And um, with Norwich's um, defensive poor record, etc., especially away from home, they're in serious trouble. They're now five points adrift of the relegation zone. All in all, it finished Southampton 2, Norwich 
nil. That's Friday's game. Let's move on to Saturday's game. Early kickoff, which is the lunch that game. Um, Leeds United v Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, a rotten start for Leeds United. Defensively, they've been a complete shambles. Oh, they've been worse than a shambles. I'll tell you that now. Absolute dog foul. And they were caught out on the counter-attack. And that's the way Tottenham planned it. And Doherty getting the first goal because the marking is poor. And then you've got defenders not tracking back with runners. So it it causes a lot of um, goals to be leaked. And the second goal, well, good bit of work by um, Kulovsky. Kulovsky, or however you, Kulovsky, however you pronounce his name, I do apologise for butchering his name. I mean, what a fine strike! And then the third goal, well, you only have to look at the um, technique by Hoiberg. He placed that ball right onto Harry Kane's path, and Harry Kane took it on the side volley. And what a neat finish it was! Leeds United did create more opportunities in that first half alone. If you look at um, the number of opportunities they created, they hit the post. Uh, Hugo Lloris was beaten by that. I think he was had to make a good save. In the second half, he had Leeds um, attacking. Um, this uh, attacking. There's no thought of defence, no thought of nothing. Just attack, 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 which is, um, you know, which is um, blossoming on... In, on the eye, but you've got to be able to do the other side of the game. It's not all about attack. You've got to have a um, tactical plan from a defensive point of view. And that's where Bielsa fell short. Um, Tottenham hit them again on the counter-attack, you know, and made it 4-0. Harry came with a delightful assist and the weight of pass was exquisite. Son controlled it with the chest, ran onto it and produces a neat finish. Although um, Hugo Lloris had a moment where he's come out, he's not dealt with um, the clearance. He's done a, <laughs> he's made a, a ricket of it. But um, luckily, as um, the Leeds player came forward with the ball, getting closer towards goal, Ben Davis produces um, a challenge to prevent um, Tottenham from conceding, and it keeps Lloris with another clean sheet. So it finished Leeds United nil, Tottenham Hotspur four, and. That was um, Bielsa's last game because I think Leeds have announced that... I think Leeds... No, I don't think. Leeds United announced that he was sacked. Brentford v Newcastle United. Now, you make Newcastle slight favourites. And um, the way they started off, especially Ryan Fraser on the left, the way he was um, getting the joy out of that, out of their right hand side of the right back he was just on fire and Joe Linton what a um, transformation from attack to attacking midfield he can see that he's playing with a freedom and he's enjoying his football unlike when he was playing as a number nine and um it was a combination there on the left between I think John Joe Shelby and Ryan Fraser Ryan Fraser um puts in the cross it hang he hangs it up Joe Linton what a header one nil. Um, before that, um, there was a sending off in that game. Um, da Silva, despicable and nasty challenge on um, Matt Taggart, and he had to go. I thought it was borderline premeditated, if not premeditated for one hundred. It was disgusting to watch. He knew exactly what he was doing, and I think Thomas Frank should have a stern word with him, especially if he's watched it back. If any Brentford fan has watched that back, they should, I'll tell you what, they should be very angry with Josh De Silva. You know, this is a contest, yeah, that they had an opportunity of getting a result and he put pay to that. that He, that, he put pay to that uh, moment of complete stupidity, horribleness, and it was just, it was just uncalled for. But other than that, we talk about the game and um, the biggest moment of that game was the emotional return to football for Christian Eriksen. And even I had to applaud. And I'll do it again. 
it was great to see the guy on the pitch again. And um, in that second half, especially, Brentford were more in the first on the front foot. And you could see the quality Ericsson produces, you know, long distance passes, weight of passes, just immac immaculate. And he's, you know, his vision up there, it's just second to none. He's ahead of um, some of his teammates already. But to see him on the pitch again, I didn't think it was possible that um, Ericsson would ever play football again. But he proved the whole world wrong and the whole world stood up and it was touching for me, very touching from here. Welcome back home, Christian Eriksen. It's um, a pleasure to see you on the pitch again. It's a sad, sad situation when you've collapsed and picked up a cardio and picked up a cardio attack against you. But you fought so hard and strong to get back to where you want to be. And um, it's a massive credit to yourself. You never gave up and um, it's amazing to see you in the Premier League again. But nevertheless, um, Brentford fell short to Newcastle. Um, Joe Linton with the, the first goal and the second goal in that first half was um, a good finish by Joe Willock who will score goals from midfield when and if he can. So it finished um, Brentford new Newcastle United 2. Brighton v Aston Villa. Let's um, talk about this game. Villa started off on the front foot very quickly. Gerard went with the two number nines up top and um, it paid dividends, I suppose. Although um, in, in the first half, Matt, uh, Matt, Matty Cash has one sh clean strike on goal and what a strike from 20-odd yards out. Keeper, no chance. And um, Brighton did try... Um, respond. I think they created a couple of opportunities, but um, it just wasn't to be. Robert Sanchez had to make um, one or two good saves in that game, but Villa were the better team on the day. And the second goal, Ollie Watkins um, put clip through and clear on goal and um, he was not going to miss the target from where he was. Other than that, Brighton just fell short at the end of the day and um, it just wasn't to be. It finished Brighton of Albion nil, Esther Villa 2. Crystal Palace v Burnley. Uh, well, star player of that game. Well, not Wilfred Saha, Michael Alise. What a signing for 8 million. And this young guy is going to end up um, a big, big star. He may pot potentially end up um, at a bigger club in years to come. The greatest with respect to Crystal Palace. However, um, they started on the front foot. Well, they started on the back foot. Burnley were on the front foot. And um, I think they produced a wonderful save from Greta, uh, Dieta. And put um, Palace on under it. But Palace responded back. And, um, well, what a good bit of wing play by Emelise. Beat the fullback, twisted him in and inside and out. And produces a fine cross on his weaker foot which is right. And um, Jeffrey Shook was not going to miss um, the header from where he was. It was one year Palace. Um, Burnley came out in the second half um, much more on the front foot. And um, Aaron Lennon, put, um, he's put through and he's, um, you know, he's done a cutback on the cross. And um, Milojevic, so unlucky. He's running at speed. He slid in, but he could not um, control the first touch of that ball. And it just ended up at the back stick in the rippling at the back of the net. There's nothing that Butland could do or um, Luca can do. It was just one of those situations. And then Burnley, you know, their tails were up a bit and they were going for a winning goal. Gator had to make a good save from Vigors from a corner. Um... It was mainly evenly balanced. Saha hit the post, you know, and you can see that um, it was a very competitive game, which finished Crystal Palace 1, Burnley 1. Man United v Watford, I mean, it was a game dominated by Manchester United. They were on the front foot. They created a number of opportunities. And how did Man United not win it by three to four clear goals? It's beyond me. 
Fernandez, Bruno Fernandez put through, saved by Brendan Foster. Fernandez again, and that, sorry, Fernandez again, put through again. Cross comes in, in swinging, and he's missed um, from six yards out the target. And this guy has got a right foot, sending sending Ben Foster the wrong way. He looked like he was beaten, but he's put it wide. Cristiano Ronaldo had a goal disallowed because he was just offside. Uh, again, Cristiano Ronaldo had an assist from Fernandez, and you know the defenders got in the way. Watford defended um, at times on truly and they got away with it. You know, they got away with a thrashing. Although, he's made a saw and Watford um, counter-attacked uh, Manchester United and um, it's made a saw was not far away from possibly stealing um, or stealing the winner which would have been a smash and grab. Nevertheless, it finished Manchester United nil, Watford nil. Last game of the Saturday uh, fixture was the evening kick, the late afternoon kickoff between Everton and Manchester City. And may I talk about? Um, I will be talking about that penalty. But for me, Everton um, gave as good as they they got. They defended resolutely and attacked um, counter attack Man City very well. Edison had to um, be on his um, game by producing one or two saves. I think Man City got to grips with the game in the second half more and um, created opportunities. Although in the first half, De Bruyne had the shot on target, well smothered. And then, um, I think that was in the second half, sorry. And then Pickford had to make two good double saves and, until the, Rick, oh, the, the error that um, led to Man City's winner. Michael King was always leaning to the left. He couldn't adjust himself quick enough to, to get onto his right and um, clear the ball. Foden takes his first touch round um, away from Pickford and taps it into the net. He was never going to miss from there. And then the controversial moment, Rodri, handball and VAR. <laughs> How did um, the person in Stockley Park did not award that as a penalty? Like Lampard says, a three-year-old could have told you that was a penalty, and it was waved off. It was waved um, offside. Can someone work that one out? That is despicable. That is disgusting. Man City have got away with murder yet again. I find that despicable. It it's starting to leap. It's starting to make me feel that football is being fixed for the better teams. And it's disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. If you disagree or not, yeah. Whether you disagree or not, should I say, leave it in the comment section below. But I'm getting sick of it. However, it finished Everton, Neil Man City won. And um, Ashley Cole and Frank Lampard has every right to be incandescent. In fact, the whole of Everton Football Club, including their fan base, have every right to be incandescent. Right, moving on to Sunday's game, the only game of um, the only game of the weekend, or well, only game of Sunday, and the last game of um, Sun of the Premier League was West Ham United v Wolves. Uh, West Ham were always um, on the front foot; thought they were a lot quicker on the ball. They were a lot quicker um, with their style of play, with their passing, and you can see the passing and movement is um, a joy to watch at times, scintillating. And um, Declan Rice had a curling effort from the left from 25 yards out, or nearly 25 yards out, beating Jose Sarr, but not the post. Um, Joe Bowen had an opportunity to put... Um, Mikel Antonio through, but I think the final pass was um, not was just slacking. Although Antonio had an opportunity being put through by a West Ham play teammate, and he had to take the shot quickly, and he forced a good save from Jose Sarr. And in the end of the first half, um, Hang Hang Ching, oh, oh, the South Korean attacking player, Hang, he had an 
excellent opportunity from up to 20 yards out and he's missed the target. He shouldn't be missing the target from there. He should be hitting the target at least. But he didn't. He even hit the post. Um, second half, West Ham gained um, the control of the game. Although what um, Wolves had an earlier chance in that second half where Hang was involved again and he teed up his teammate Trancal who had a shot just over the bar, not far away from the target. And um, looking back at that game, it was a moment of brilliance from um, Mikel Antonio. He sets up um, his teammate Shusek, who has been doing that all season since he signed, or since he signed from West Ham, arriving late in the box to score goals, and he arrived late. He arrived late again to to slid in and get um, the only goal of the game, which finished um, West Ham United one, Wolves nil. And the Carabao Cup game uh, between Chelsea and Liverpool. Um, it was um, a good. It was a great nil nil from a from a neutral spectacle. And I'll tell you what, Chelsea had um, the net had the ball. Had the, uh, Chelsea had the net bulging two times, but they were they, they were judged correctly as offside. Liverpool had the ball in the back of the net, and um, it was um, correctly ruled out. But both teams had opportunities after opportunities. It was played in a it was played in a traditional way, and I thought um, it would go down to penalties. And well, it came back. It came down to the goalkeepers. Kelleher scored. Um, he's won. He took his penalty well. And Kappa, he was he was brought on to replace Ben. Um, Eduardo Mendy and I just don't understand that I think Mendy is capable of saving the penalty you know that's a bit I think it's a disrespect from the management there to I mean to has got to take um, full responsibility on that decision and Kepo ended up missing the penalty over the bar Liverpool winning the um, Capital One Cup oh the Carabao Cup so congratulations Liverpool Football Club and commiserations to the Chelsea Football Club so it finished um, nil nil after 120 minutes, and um, Liverpool win 11 10 on penalties. So let me um, wrap this up now and um, say once again, it's a pleasure to have you listening to me or have you watching. So, ladies and gentlemen, to the boys, to the girls, always a pleasure to say thank you for listening, thank you for tuning in, thank you for watching. Saving the best to last, as I always do. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be back again, maybe this evening or tomorrow, more likely. Until then, take care of your friends, take care of your families, take care of yourselves. Stay safe, keep warm. Um, enjoy your evening. And on top of that, yeah, peace, love and bless again. Until next time, DLG Repping, we will talk again. I'm out of here. Just please be nice.